Hi everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Mills Plastic. Today's video on From the Bench, we're going to look at the Big Tree Tech Pi. And the Big Tree Tech Pi is a Raspberry Pi replacement uh, device that is um, priced very aggressively and has a lot of the features that we want to see in a, a 3D printer environment. So um, let's have a quick look at what's going on under the hood. So with the Big Tree Tech Pi, um, it is based on the Big Tree Tech CB1 um, add-on board, which they've developed uh, in the past for using on um, Manta boards and so on and so forth. Um, so it uses the same OS image as the CB1. Um, it is a Pi replacement device. It is not 100% Raspberry Pi, so some Pi-specific features um, operating system commands, so on and so forth, are not applicable to the BTT Pi, um, but we'll have a look at what it does offer and uh, see how it can run a Clipper environment. So to flash the Big Tree Tech Pi, we need to follow the same step as when we're flashing the CB1. And when we click here, um, it'll take us to the page that has details on how to do that for the CB1. So basically, wherever it refers to CB1, just assume we're talking about the Big Tree Tech Pi. Um, what's important to note about the CB1 is it has its own uh, hardware image, so you cannot use the Raspberry Pi image. Um, you can use the Raspberry Pi Imager software to burn the image to an SD card, but you can't use the actual uh, software image of the Raspberry Pi. Um, or things like main sale OS, you need a custom, um, a custom image, which Big Tree Tech provides on this page. So uh, another thing that's important to note is when you log into the Big Tree Tech uh, for the first time, you're going to log in with the user BIQU, so BQ, and the password is also BIQU. Um, you can create new users or change the password, adjust that as you like. But at least initially for your first login, that's uh, how you're going to get into the system. So um, to burn the image uh, you need onto the, that's not the one we want. Um, where is the folder? There we go. I just wasn't looking in the right place. So the operating system image is located here. And we can go find the latest version is version 2.3.3, which was released on July 14th of this year. Um, there are some notes in the change log, so feel free to read through those and see um, if anything applies to your configuration. Otherwise, you can expand assets here and then go and download one of these images. Um, I tend to stick to the uh, XZ image. Um, in this case, you have a minimal version and a full version with uh, Clipper and everything. So if you want uh, a version that has most of the software you'll want pre-installed, you can grab this version. It is larger, 1.24 gigabytes. If you just want a minimal operating system image and you'll go and manually install Clipper and various other applications yourself, you can pull the smaller image down instead. Um, so once you have that, again, you follow the same process uh, as you would with the Raspberry Pi um, software, except um, you're not going to configure the Wi-Fi in the Raspberry Pi imager software. So if I open that up, just see what that looks like for a second. Give me just a moment. So here we go. If we were to download the operating system and choose storage, um, normally there would be a cogwheel button here if we were, for example, picking Raspberry Pi software. You'd see this cogwheel button. Um, this cogwheel button won't do anything with the um, if you're using the CB1 image. Uh, it just won't be available to you because it's not Raspberry Pi software, so it doesn't have the uh, it doesn't know how to configure that. Instead, you need to follow the instructions on the Big Tree Tech GitHub here. Um, but you can use, um, when you choose the operating system here, instead of choosing that, you would choose, for example, 
use custom and go get the image from wherever you've downloaded it. Um, in this case, I've already done this, so I'm not going to walk you through this process. Um, but you can also follow in the Big Tree Tech user manual um, PDF, which you can also get from the Big Tree Tech GitHub if you want more uh, direct um, steps on how to use that image or software to burn the image to the system. Um, once you have the image burned onto the SD card, you'll then need to go and um, let's take a look here. We're going to need to go and set up the network configuration. So it talks about basically putting the SD card into your computer and going and finding the system.cfg file on that drive. Um, and in here, you're going to need to modify these lines where you'll put in your Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password. And that'll allow the BTT Pi to connect to your Wi-Fi network and be available on the Wi-Fi network. Now, as I said, I've already done this in my environment here, so I'm not going to go over this again, but know that the instructions are all there in the um, Big Tree Tech Pi user manual. I've also available on the Big Tree Tech GitHub. Um, all right, so having said that, let's have a look at what is available on the Big Tree Tech Pi. And I apologize for that jumping up. All right, so um, here's an image of the board. And we'll look at some of the configuration options here. Um, note the dimensions of the board. If you pay attention carefully, you'll see that the um, screw holes for mounting, these four screw holes, are not in a perfect rectangle. Um, this one in the upper left corner in this orientation of the board is further out to the left than the one below it. Um, so if you want to mount this on DIN rails or uh, you need a custom mounting solution, you have to find one specific for the Big Tree Tech Pi or make your own if you are so inclined and have the skills to do so. Um, so just be aware of that. You can't use uh, a standard Raspberry Pi 4 uh, mounting bracket because the screw holes won't be in the right place. Or at least one of the four screw holes won't be in the right place. The other three, I think, are. Um, so if you don't mind getting by with just three or four screws uh, mounting it, then that might also be option for you. Um, let's see what kind of connectivity we have on the board. So we have uh, four USB ports. We have an Ethernet port. We have a fan port. We have the 40-pin GPIO, which is standard to most of these Pi-like devices. Um, an infrared receiver tube. So this, to me, is like a, you know, it's an infrared receiver. So you could use it for like infrared remote. Not really sure what applicability that has to 3D printing. But hey, it's another access point, another peripheral you could play with and configure. Um, if anyone has any ideas as to why you would want an infrared receiver tube on your printer control board, please let me know in the comments below. Um, we can power the board via USB, which is down here. It's a USB-C port. Um, but we can also power the board via a 12 or 24 volt power supply using these power in leads. Um, and if you're going to power via the USB port, you need to jumper these two pins, I believe it's uh, pins J8, um, as they're labeled on the board. And if there's a jumper on these pins, um, it'll try to power the board from the USB port over 5 volts. And if there's no jumper on these pins, then it expects you to provide power through the power in. And uh, as per the documentation, this can handle either 12 or 24 volt power in. Um, we have a ribbon cable uh, connector for an ADXL. Uh, 345, and then we have uh, an SPI screen connector if you have an SPI uh, LCD screen. Um, we also have an audio jack if you want to connect a 3.5 millimeter audio device, headphones, or speakers. Um, an HDMI port, so it's a mini HDMI port or micro HDMI port. I'm not sure the exact uh, naming there, but it's the, you know, the smaller HDMI port that's common on most Pi like devices. Uh, and then we have some CAN uh, pins here, which are, are interesting. So we have our CAN bus um, boards here, and they're labeled CAN plus and CAN minus. Um, those are directly mappable to CAN H, or CAN high, and CAN L, or CAN low. Um, and the middle pin is a ground pin. Um, and I'll show you what I've done on my setup and connected it successfully um, using just the CAN H and CAN L wires uh, to this connector. 
All right, so that's your connectivity on the board. Um, I'm going to switch over to my um, phone screen, and I'm going to show you. I can get, here we go. All right, so. Now what I want to do is show you the device. Um, and as I mentioned, um, for my test bench setup, and I apologize the uh, jankiness of the wires here, um, I have it set up with um, the Big Tree Tech Pi, so the BTT Pi version 1.2. Um, it is currently being powered by the USB-C port, and we see that the jumper is applied to that uh, the set of pins that I was just mentioning. Um, I do not have it wired up via the 12 or 24 volt power up here. Um, what else do we have connected? We have my Octopus version 1.1 MCU, which is over here, and it's connected to this USB port. On this Big Tree Tech Pi, I do have the U2C module, and this is um, a mini U2C. If you're familiar with Big Tree Tech's other U2C device, which looks something like this, this is a much smaller version footprint of the same thing. And it actually mounts directly onto, um, onto the Big Tree Tech Pi via some pins that are surfaced on the PCB there. Um, so it offers the same functionality um, as the full-size uh, U2C, but doesn't require any extra, any extra space. Now, it is sold separately. It does not come with a Big Tree Tech Pi. Um, so you will want to um, look for that if that's something you want to put in your system. And then here we have the uh, CAN-H and CAN-L. In this case, uh, CAN-H is the red wire on the left and CAN-L is the black wire on the white. Uh, again, I've patched a bunch of patches here to get it all hooked up. I've got my CAN wiring going through these Wago clip connectors as well as the power from the power supply to the tool head. And I can see that the tool head, in this case, I have a Nomi on the tool head. Uh, however, the Nomi um, is currently uh, set for my old Wi-Fi network. I haven't updated it since I've changed Wi-Fi networks and I've changed uh, internet service providers. So the Nomi itself is not able to connect to the um, Clipper install um, for this printer because um, it's on the old Wi-Fi and not the new Wi-Fi. So I need to address that and fix that. But this is just to give you an example that you know we have a system here and everything's working, everything's powered up, um, including the tool head. And yeah, so here we have, you know, all of the things that you could likely want. Now, what is missing from the Big Tree Tech Pi? Why should you not use this instead of a Raspberry Pi? So uh, in my case, my printers already had um, DSI for display and CSI for cameras. So the, the Pi ribbon cable devices, you have the ribbon cable to the display and the ribbon cable to the camera, uh, the Pi camera module. So because I already have those Pi-like devices on my printers, um, this board doesn't have a CSI or a DSI port. It has an SPI port, which if you have an SPI display you can use there, but that's not what I have already. And rather than buy new displays and new cameras, um, I've stuck to the Raspberry Pi in my printers. But if you don't have those devices, if you don't have uh, a CSI camera or a DSI display, and you can make do with a USB camera and either an HDMI or an SPI display, then this could be a viable option for you. And their price point is quite competitive. Um, I forget exactly how much it's sold for. Um, now, full disclosure, this BTT Pi device was sent to me free of charge from Big Tree Tech um, for my review. Um, no money changed hands. And um, I'm going to be uploading this video just as soon as I finish shooting this. And because of the time difference between Canada and China, some of you will probably see this video before Big Tree Tech does. Um, so just know that whenever I do these, rev these reviews where uh, hardware has been supplied to me at no charge, 
Um, the expectation is I'm always giving an honest uh, assessment and review of the device. Um, so there you have it. Everything's working fine. Um, and other than that, you know, it runs Clipper just just fine. I have uh, Clipper already installed on this Pi to, on this Big Tree Tech Pi, and um, it is running with the the CAN bus tool board. I have the SB2240 mounted in the Stealth Burner tool head, um, and you know, driving a Big Tree Tech Octopus. So um, yeah, it it's it's working well. Um, if I develop and if I build another printer that doesn't have a DSI and a CSI camera already installed, then I'll probably use this as a device um, to power that printer because it uh, does does everything that I would need it to for a Clipper printer control board, printer host. All right, um, that's it for today's video. Thank you again for watching. If there's any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them uh, down below. Uh, as of the time that I recorded this video, I was up to 955 subscribers, which is absolutely fantastic, um, closing in on that 1,000 subscriber mark. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like what you saw in this video, please feel free to give us a, subscri uh, a subscribe or a like. And uh, yeah, that's it for tonight. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to reading your comments below.